Just sure. Right, we're ready to carry on. Um, Andrew is going to tell us about the wonders of having released Sam before. Let's check if. Let me put this up where it will actually work. Okay, yeah, we, we finally did it. We actually got Sam before out. Um, that's the slide I kind of put up to tell everyone who doesn't know what I've been doing for a while. Um, and I particularly want to thank Netgear, who's uh, been doing a lot of the support for uh, supporting me in this work. Um, Samba 4 has been going for a long time, as all of you know. Uh, we released in December. We finally got the thing out there. Um, we've also got some other things. It's not just a demo controller. It also is our new SMB3 file server, the, um, a new generation of file serving protocol. Um, bare skeleton of that, just enough to claim the support, <coughs> not the optional features, but um, it's a, another big thing that's been going on in parallel. Um, we have a new unified build system. This means that Samba now takes up much less space on your distribution. Um, we have Python client libraries. Um, and we have an Active Directory domain controller. We have been doing this for too long. We have also been uh, working to support other external projects, OpenChange, FreeIPA, both use Samba libraries to make them better. We now only have one Samba 4.0. There is no more the Samba 4 fork and the Samba 3 fork. There is just Samba 4.0. We continue as a unified development from here. There is no longer these bits of Samba releasing in different ways. Um, the, the, the part of the reason for the delay in getting Samba 4 coming so far along is we had to get it back together before we could agree to call it Samba 4. We weren't going to have Samba 4 and then a Samba 3 release coming sort of afterwards. That was going to be a mess. So there is only one Samba and uh, we are working towards it continuously. Um, we have upgraded the file server. Um, so you can upgrade your file server from Samba 3.x to Samba 4 and things still work. We have removed two features that were millstones around our neck. We have got rid of security equals server, which was a way of passing through authentication in a, and a just trust that guy kind of model. We don't think that's secure on a modern network. So we've said that, look, you, you have to join a domain if you want to trust someone else. That way we've got cryptographic proof that the other, DC isn't be, other machine isn't being spoofed. Security equals share uh, matched the networking model that, we, that was used back almost two decades ago. Uh, it hasn't been used in Windows in a very long time and we finally got rid of it in Samba. It also was staying simply to break because it wasn't working properly with modern authentication protocols. It, Samba 4 isn't a large change for file server users if you're not using these features. Um, and if you are using these features, um, there are ways to read it. Most security equals share setups were for public servers where you didn't want any passwords at all and we've got a wiki page that simply says what other options to use. Uh, security equals server was basically used when people needed to join the corporate domain and you just need to get permission to join the corporate domain. Um, but some of the things that we've got, SMB3 is actually a big thing in, in terms of high performance file serving. Um, it is uh, what is bringing real clustering uh, to the protocols in a way that um, well, Samba has been a cluster in the past. Um, Microsoft is, those features are now really working well in SMB3. You've got things like um, where you've got a file open against your server, that server dies. The previous model was you would try and notice the server died, you connect back, and the cluster would then connect you to another server. SMB3 brings durable file handles. So you can actually keep all your locks, you keep all the state about the file open and that will work with CTDB uh, to have better cluster, better uptime, uh, and these things working better. But, you know, that's not really my area, I do the DC stuff. Uh, continuous integration, I'll be talking about in the next slot, I'm talking about the work we've done to have um, auto build and bringing a really quality Samba the whole time. Um, but that's, that's an advertisement for my talk in the next slot. Um, over in the CI Mini Conference. Upgrading the, to the uh, Samba 4 DC, that's, that's where the real meat of the work I've been doing is. Um, if you've got a Samba th 3 domain, we're calling them classic domains because we sort of ran a contest on the list and it was like... Um, <laughs> I had someone come up to ask me, did we really agree on classic domains? Well, yeah, I fudged it. Um, <laughs> But basically, Samba Tool Domain Classic Upgrade upgrades your Samba 3.x domain, or if you continued using Samba as a classic DC, Samba 4 still contains all the old code for being an NT4-like domain controller, 
and you can upgrade later if you're not ready right now. But this, this will transform from an NT4-like domain to a SAMBA4 Active Directory domain. It will upgrade TB SAM databases very well. Upgrades SMB password. It upgrades your LDAP backends. All these things are scripted. Uh, we'd like some improvements to the scripts because there are things that don't, uh, particularly for LDAP, that administrators have very complex LDAP domains. Um, these can be improved, but it will handle the basics. It gets the structure in place and you're then free to adjust the tree once it's done. But it's up and it works right. One of the important things about upgrading from SAMPA 3.x is it will find bugs in your configuration. It does, if so I had a check that says, do I have two users with the same SID? Do I have a group and a user with the same name? Do I have many other things that are just not allowed, but we didn't check for before? So it may not be a, a smooth process. You will need to allocate time, but it's only because your database has been in such a poor state for so long. <laughs> so it's for your own good. We also have migration from Windows, of course. You can join Samba to a Windows domain and we then become an additional domain controller. There is no need in any of these migration scenarios to, shut, to uh, rejoin your client workstations. It is the same domain. And you should use the upgrade rather than saying, oh, look, I'll wipe it all and start from scratch. I've got all this old stuff I want to get rid of. It is better to upgrade. Because we're consistent checking, the idea of losing things isn't, isn't so much of an issue. Um, Sorry, the old craft being such an issue, but it means you really want to keep your domain SID because all your users' profiles are stored on their local computer. Their files stored on each of those domain members. You think, I'll oh, just rejoin the machines. Those local files need to have the correct SID, otherwise they lose ownership of the files. Their profiles have the SIDs all the way through it. It's better to try and f make your, your domain work with the upgrade. As I said, LDAP backends are a real challenge. SAMBA 4 as Active Directory Domain Controller does not support the open LDAP backend that I know many large sites have used with SAMBA. Oh, we know this is a really big pain point for our larger installations because SAMBA has been such a great friend of the cooperative Unix ecosystem with LDAP backends and you, know, you have all sorts of other services running across your LDAP server that isn't part of SAMBA. And it was with incredible pain that we simply said we can't make this work. We tried. You have to use our internal LDAP server. It's the only one that has Active Directory semantics. You can then go and add extra schema to our server, add extra data. It's not as smooth as I'd like, but it's the only option we've got at the moment. It is still, I believe, better to migrate to that than to try and do synchronization scripts back and forth, but if you must, you can try. Um, you still use the same upgrade and then you can go and pull your extra attributes in. I'd really like to in enhance our script to pull more things that we know will just work across. Currently it just pulls the essential attributes that existed in our other databases, but there is um, plus some extra POSIX stuff, the, the very standard stuff. Um, but basically we want to get, uh, I'd like that improved and patches are very much welcome. Um, it can be a pain to load the extra schema. Our schema stuff's a little We also have an embedded Heimdall KDC. Active Directory is, you know, in, in its essence, LDAP, Kerberos, and a big RPC server and a pile of gunk underneath that glues it together. So you have to use our KDC. You can't say, oh, but I really like the one from a particular place in the institute on the east coast of the US. You know, their one is special. Sorry. You have to use ours. Um, importing from an existing KDC. Uh, if it's an MIT KDC, it can be done. You've just got to get out the keys. It's a real pain, but people have done it. Um, if you've been using the common Samba 3 Heimdall setup that a number of people have, have got working, basically you upgrade it as if it was just a Samba 3 domain and um, you'll lose some of the extra keys, but the basics will work and you can fix it up from there. Patches are again welcome uh, to make this work a bit better. Now, I'm sorry to say that we've... <laughs> We just don't trust anyone. Um, it's just not something we've been able to bring ourselves to do. Um, no, I'd love to be able to have proper domain trusts, but we don't have the infrastructure for that yet. There are, it's one domain, one forest. We don't even support subdomains. We started down developing some of that over a year ago, but that was about when we finished up doing Samba development and started on the work to gain the release. Um, so you can, tr you can be trusted by Samba classic domains, um, but
but only trusting in, not trusting out. Um, and inter-realm stuff, there's some stuff that sort of happens to work just because we've got a real KDC there and some things just fall out of that. Um, I haven't gone to effort to break this stuff, but there, um, we haven't been able to find the resources to add anything more. But we do have replication. And I, it's really important. It is, um, you can, it is really important if you're going to set up a new DC that you have uh, two domain controllers so that if one goes, you haven't lost your whole network. Um, there are things about it that don't, aren't as stable as we like, um, but it's, um, it does work. You know, we don't, particularly why I say not fully supported, is it's things like we have a dense mesh of, of replication. We basically try and replicate with every DC out there. So if your WAN links aren't very wide and you have a lot of changes, well, your DC shouldn't be changing that much. But you know, that's just how it is. There's no site optimization, and schema changes can be a bit of a challenge. You really want to carefully test adding schema to a separate test domain before you add it to your live one, because um, it's actually quite challenging replicating schema in Active Directory. You have to first replicate the schema, then replicate everything else that uses the schema. Um, and that stuff's a bit dodgy. Um, I've been working on it literally in the last few days. Um, it's still the best option redundancy, however. Do not try and use CTDB or DRDB or any other ways of trying to have you know, a virtual single serve with high availability. I spent a number of days rescuing a New Zealand school from their database that, um, where they had lost barriers. And they had DRDB. Um, and so they thought they were all great. They had their mirrored set up. Their database corrupted. Their backups had long since cycled over and all I could do was write a custom tool to try and extract out what data I could get. It was a mess. Um, it's much better to have two fully working DCs, separate stores, separate everything. Um, you will have to replicate across the Sysvol partition uh, where you've got your uh, group policy files because they are, um, we don't have any file system replication at the moment. Packaging. This really is a sad story, but I guess we really have only been out a month. We don't have any proper real you know, distribution the way it's meant to be done in a distribution packaging with the Active Directory domain controller. We basically tell everybody who turns up and says, oh, I really want a Ubuntu package. No, look, you've got to install it from the source tarball because nothing else is, is currently installed in the whole distribution, the whole Samba distribution. Uh, the Debian package is an experimental, a good, and Yomra has done a great job providing a way of getting uh, SAM before onto Debian uh, systems, but it doesn't include the file server that we actually have shipped to SAM before O. It instead tries to do everything that won't conflict with the SAM 3.6 that's already in that distribution. Um, there are other packages that people have done where they put the whole lot in opt and they put it as one package and it sort of, it, you know, it installs. And that's not really a package in the normal sense. It's, you know, at least it's done in a, a, in a file, but it's not the normal way you expect it. And Red Hat and Fedora have decided that, that MIT is the only one and true blessed Kerberos that they allow on their platforms. Because that KDC doesn't exist in our DC, they have turned off the Active Directory domain controller. That's their prerogative, but their packages do not have this functionality. Um, they have their reasons. They may eventually fix up. There's a plugin that's in theory available. It's been written, but hasn't been worked on in two years. I don't know if there's any what the plans are to work on that. It's just, it's been turned off and it may come back at some point. Um, hopefully that someone will provide an alternate set of packages or perhaps they'll provide ones that, where you can turn this on. They don't want to have two separate Kerberos libraries in their distribution. I can understand that, but it means this functionality just is not there. So I would love for, I actually started on Debian package for the whole of Samba 4 to try and replace the Samba 3x packages, but I am not a Debian packager in the slightest, and I got stuck in DebConf scripts and stuff that, you know, after, and look, it's just not my native world. I run Fedora, and so I'd really like someone to pick up my work and turn it to something that works. <coughs> um, as I said, my other major to do's is sysfold replication. It means you basically have to do lasting stuff We've really dropped the ball on this in that we don't even have a standard script for it. Um, we've been working so hard on getting anything else. I understand most people do a bit of an async job. Um, replication topology, as I mentioned. We're also going to try and improve performance for very large sites. Um, people seem to be using some, pre some pretty large installs, but we know LDB has some things that aren't entirely great about its very large site performance. And there are some things we can work just to, if we ever have to scan the database to make it not suck quite so badly. 
but people really are using it. People have been using it for years. And now that we've got it released, all, all the p questions I got from the back of so many years of, well, if you please at least call the release, I'm sure I'll promise to deploy it at my site. Well, your excuses are over. We have schools, we have NGOs, we have companies, we have cities that have deployed this um, and have come to us looking for help and we've been able to help them with the issues they've had. We do have an enthusiastic user base. Um, and we have people who are able to help you. It's not just, um, I'm very, very glad to have other people on the mailing list who are sorting people out with the issues that come up. And that has been um, really helpful to me because there's only, you know, so much of me. <laughs> so there don't seem to be major issues that are causing people, you know, really big pain. And um, we're also, we're continuing to fix it. We are continuing our development of, of the next version of Sam before. Um, we're going to do a 4.1 eventually and we're do, you know, continuing development, but we're also putting a lot of fixes back in. There'll be a, the next scheduled uh, maintenance release is in a, a bit over a week's time. We're about to freeze for that, so patches are piling in fast. Uh, but, um, yeah, um, we're getting there and we're getting, I think, some pretty good software out there. Um, with the Active Directory Domain Controller, we now use the same file server for all default server roles. You can use the old one that we built, the second one that you would have, when we first talked about Samba 4, you know, Trid said his new VFS for Samba 4 back at a conference in Perth. Um, that's, oh, thank you. Uh, that file server still exists, and we think it's a great model of how to build a new file server from scratch. But uh, we've instead used the production file server that we were in SMBD. Um, and that's the same in every role. We just force on some extra options to make sure things really work for the DC, um, make sure we get our apples right. Um, so you can coexist your file server and your normal server, um, but we generally recommend that if you've got a really big file server, put it on a member server and have your DC separate. We'll let you upgrade them separately because there may be issues that come up with one or the other. Um, so it's not that they won't work together, it's just that I reckon that if you're big enough that you're you know, complaining about this, that you really should split them. Um, but if you're producing a little box that's one thing, you know, one little box and you don't want to do VMs, it'll work fine. Um, there is a, one thing people notice is WinBind. Uh, WinBind in, in the Active Directory Domain Controller really sucks. Um, it was a prototype that never really got finished. Um, it'll do the job, but yes, you'll notice the IDMAX stuff is weird. Um, so, having rushed through the, that because uh, to help the organisers catch up time, um, I would like to take a couple of questions. All right, we've got about five minutes for questions. Um, it would be quite useful if our next speaker could be sitting up during that as well. Okay. I guess so. Uh, I'm not really inter interested in the active uh, domain part, but I'm very interested in the parallel or high performance file serving. Mm -hmm. Will I be able to use that without setting up an active uh, domain yes. controller? Yes. Be able to use Open LDAP as the back end for yeah, that? And exactly, exactly. So if you don't want to be an active directory domain controller, everything that you've been able to do with Samba 3.x, um, you can continue to do. That includes an Open LDAP back end if you so desire. Um, same issues with needing the passwords in there always apply. But uh, similarly, CTDB, all of those things are all fully compatible with, uh, with this release. Uh, we just now also have an Active Directory Domain Controller on the side. Um, this is the one big Samba with the, the latest and greatest of everything. Thanks. Other questions? Uh, yeah, over this side. Um, if, you're in, if you've got an existing Microsoft domain, the WinBind, it's only if we're an Active Directory Domain Controller that things have changed. Um, and, there, um, and in that case, if you've got an existing domain, you just need to make sure that you actually use the POSIX UID and GID attributes in the directory. Yeah, that's not good. Well, um, sure. Uh, but in, in, if that's a problem, you're probably also not joining a Samba domain to that, a Samba do Domain Controller to that domain. So, um, if, you know, basically, if you need a consistent identity mapping in your Active Directory domain, then you put the attributes on each user as UID and GID. There are some compromises with that. It's the whole the reason that this is a, not ideal is that there, it actually is a hard problem. Um, but 
Yeah, the, and we're going to, the, using the RID uh, based system, is, um, it also has its own challenges. Um, and basically, as we change the windbind implementation across, uh, we'll be able to use those same features in the domain controller as remain available in the file server. Uh, in the domain member case. It's just that we have two code bases that we just haven't had the time and energy to merge yet. Uh, just from, di from the different development streams we've been on. Uh, okay, up the back in the middle. Uh, if I roll out the sample before in my environment, I don't know much about it, but I will be asked if group policies are supported. Um, so the question was about group policies, um, and one of the reasons that we did SAMBA 4 is the group policies are fully supported in SAMBA 4 for everything that the clients see. The group policies won't apply to the domain controller itself, but for all the clients that is one of the main reasons we did the work. That and the addition of Kerberos were the two driving reasons I've spent the last God knows how many years of my life doing this, because the previous policy situation in SAMBA really sucked. And so group policies is a very important and, and, and a, a fully supported feature of the Active Directory Domain Controller. Uh, other questions up the front? Uh, the main level shares? Sorry? The main level shares? Uh, DFS uh, shares. Uh, yes, DFS shares are supported, um, but uh, I'm not sure on the full details on that. Um, we use them for handling the, uh, the net logon and syspol shares, so they have to work for that. I haven't looked into the details of how you add other shares into that process. Uh, personally, I would point them at a, a separate server that, that ran just the normal MSDFS links but, uh, to, to other places, but um, I haven't looked into the rest, but we know we have to have at least some of it for a net logon and sysfol. Uh, you'll need to dig into where it goes beyond that. Hopefully it's generic. One more question. Last question. Um, other than that, I will be at the um, Developer Automation and Continuous Integration Miniconf after this um, break uh, to talk about the way that we get um, use auto-build for continuous integration and testing in Samba. So if you're interested in more guts, details about how we actually built it, then that's where I'll be. Okay, uh, I'll go next speaker. Thank you, Andrew.